Hey guys, welcome to another video for Anatomy and Physiology. In this video, we're taking a look at skeletal muscle actions. So skeletal muscles uh, act as levers. Uh, levers is kind of a physics term when we're talking about the uh, dynamics of, of movement in, uh, from an object that's being moved in relation to the objects that are moving um, the, uh, the set object. So let's kind of dive into this and what we're talking about here. So again, you have muscles that are attached to skeletal, the skeletal system. And when those muscles contract, they shorten, the bellies of the muscles will shorten, causing motion uh, on one end. Uh, so the classic example that your textbook uses is the biceps brachii. And so we're, we're going to take a look at that. And we're going to kind of dissect uh, how this particular uh, aspect of the anatomy is, uh, is a lever. So this is stuff that we kind of take for granted as far as how we move on a daily basis. And we're just really looking at the physics, and, uh, the, well, not so much the physics, but uh, we're really looking at the, um, at the minutia, if you will, of, of uh, our everyday movement. And so like I said, uh, the text uses the biceps as the classic example for a lever. So let's, let's first see how, uh, where the biceps is connected. So we see that it's point of origin. Remember when I said, when you're trying to delineate the point of origin from its insertion, you know, when you think about point of origin, think of the part of the, of the limb that is, that has the least movement, the relative least movement, and then compare that to the part of the limb that's having the most movement, like at the elbow here. So here we're having the most movement and up here at the shoulder, we're having the least. So this is the point of origin for the biceps. And of course the biceps, the biceps, it's, by two, right? So it's two bellies, or it's one belly that bi bifurcates into two. And we have here the, uh, the long head. And this long head, as I zoom in here, you can see here its insertion point, or its uh, point of origin, is just just on a superior aspect of the glenoid cavity right here. So it kind of goes, uh, goes up to the humerus, and right here in the glenoid cavity, just, uh, just above it, the, the superior margin, that's called. Can I zoom in anymore? No, that's it. Okay, so then if I look at the, the short head, okay, this one is connected at the coracoid process, right? Remember crow's beak? Okay, and then let's run down the arm. It runs down the arm and it attaches itself. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit better here. It attaches itself here at the radial tuberosity. So this is the radius. And so when it shortens, it pulls up the radius, right? Now, it actually also kind of embeds itself into the interosseous membrane, uh, but you can't really see that here in this uh, in this image. All right. Okay, so let's return back to how this is a lever. All right, so, so when we're talking about levers, we want to first uh, talk about the different parts of a lever. There are four basic parts. You have the, the rigid bar or the rod. Okay, so those are the, those are the forearm bones. So this is the, the rod or the forearm. Okay, the rigid bar. So this is a part of the lever that where the most of the resistance uh, is, is taking place. Okay, or not most of the resistance, sorry. The resistance is actually, so if we can imagine this skeleton lifting up a dumbbell, like they're doing curls, the resistance would actually be the weight itself against the hand, but the tension would be on the forearm itself. That's where most of the tension would be. The fulcrum point is the pivot point, that's the elbow. Okay, so that's the elbow joint. And pivot points in the body are typically the joints. And then we have the object moving moving against the resistance. And that's, again, let's if you were imagining them lifting weights, it is the weight itself that the hand would be grasping. And then, finally, we're talking, we want to talk about the force that's supplying the energy for the movement. And that's essentially all you need for, um, for a lever. And as far as your book is concerned, that's, <clears throat> that's really... Um, for the most part, those, that's, it just wants you to understand the main components to a lever and how that relates to the body. So when the bellies of the biceps shorten or they contract, the force is being pushed up because again, the muscle is shortening. So the force is going in the upward direction, causing the forearm to, to move, be moved up. Okay, it's being moved up and the resistance would be the weight, you know, gravity pulling the weight down and your forearm is moving against that resistance, the force in the upward direction so the movement is going up okay so now you'll notice that the hand is going down also but we're not considering that movement yet because we're talking about we're talking about the anterior portion of the um, of the arm the biceps 
So the force going up, movement going up as well. Okay. So now let's take a look at the uh, the antagonist, the opposite side, because one thing that we didn't mention is the uh, triceps. And I don't have the triceps shown here, but these triceps would be in a relaxed state in this particular movement. So let's take a look at what the triceps. Uh, what's going so on? We're taking with a look at the triceps here, the antagonist to the biceps. So the biceps group is relaxing at this point, and it's the triceps that are contracting. This is the this is the force supplier for this movement. So when the triceps bellies shorten, they they pull, okay, they pull on the elbow, they pull down, causing the forearm to go down. Okay, so this is the actual movement. It's the down movement. With the contracting of the triceps, the arm goes down. That means that like if you're pulling on the rope, like, like your textbook shows, if you're pulling down on the rope, the weight, the resistance would be going up in this case. So the force, the force is going up and the, and the, and the, res, and the resistance is going up also. Okay. Now this one's a little bit different in that with the biceps, as the force went up, your forearm went up also. But with the antagonist, with the contracting, the shortening, the forcing, the force going up, the forearm actually goes down. Okay, the rod goes down, but the resistance, the 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 object being moved against resistance is still going up, right? So if you look at the if you look at the image in your textbook, you know the the weight it. No, no matter what direction your arm's going, it's still going up the same direction as the force. Okay, so again, the rod, where most of the tension is at, is the forearm. Okay, the pivot is the elbow, and then the, um, the force that's applying the energy of the movement is the triceps, and then the object moved against resistance would be the weight that's being moved in this case. And the motion is down for the triceps, but the, for the biceps, it's, it's, um, it's, the force, the, the shortening of the muscle is causing a force to go up, pulling on the on the uh, on the radius. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. Um, good luck in your studying.